Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Intel Core i5-750. Now many of you have asked me to review Intel CPUs, so here it is. This one here is clocked at a default 2.66 GHz using the Linfield Core. Now also it's using the 45 nanometer architecture, 95 watt, and it's of course a very low voltage CPU which is what we want so we can overclock it further. It's using the LGA 1156 socket and comes with 8 megs of level 3 cache which is expected in all of these quad core CPUs today. Now, it has features such as turbo boost for boosting overclocking by uh, a little bit from 2.6 to 3.2. It does have some differences from the original Core i7s. As you can see here, the transistor count, the die size, you can see here the uh, DDR memory channel support is dual channel instead of triple channel. It has, of course, a new support for the P5, P55 chipset instead of the uh, X58. So there are some differences in the architecture and the way it's merging the North Bridge and the South Bridge um, together into one. Okay, so that does have its benefits in uh, reducing latency, making things faster, less wait time, quicker to uh, to get um, information passed from one end to the other. Now here's my uh, test system, okay, that we're going to be doing some uh, benchmarks on. As uh, you can see, I'm using Dr. Moss here, the MSI GD80, top of the line motherboard from MSI. I did a separate review on it, so if you're interested, you can watch that uh, review on this board with this chip. And I'm using a very interesting Glacial Tech F101 um, CPU cooler, as you can see here, and I'll do a separate video review of that. Okay, now when we look at benchmarks, we're doing benchmarks using standard tools. Starting off here, of course, with CPU-Z, just so we can get the details on the Linfield Core, 45 nanometer architecture, 1.2 volts, like I mentioned a second ago. I haven't overclocked anything yet, so I'm just showing you the specs, okay? Running in Windows 7, okay, the um, temperature of, uh, of the uh, ambient here is about 21 degrees Celsius, okay? And um, pretty cool, pretty cool uh, results here. It's um, very, very cool the temperature wise I'm talking about running out at about 35 degrees Celsius maybe a little bit less than that uh, on idle here's the uh, motherboard like I mentioned the MSI motherboard and um, the memory as well I haven't overclocked uh, anything yet okay so here are the uh, results and um, I'm running two HD 4890s in crossfire on this motherboard okay so just so you know that and also when we look at the uh, temperatures on it, again, like I said, idle about 30 degrees Celsius, roughly, depending on the cores here that you're looking at. Maximum load, you'll get to maybe 50 degrees Celsius, full load, all four cores going. But then again, I didn't overclock the CPU yet, right? It's still at 2.6 gigahertz, and there are the temperature readings. All right, so if we increase the... Uh, the clock speed to 3.3 or 4 gigahertz and overclock it obviously we're going to get better results here are the 3d mark results for example the cpu scores increase as we overclock but how does this uh compare to other cpus here's the pc mark vantage score okay if you're interested as well when it comes to comparing to other cpus it does better than the phenom 2s okay so it does beat the phenom 2 x4 955 and 965 at default and at overclock speeds as you can see here okay now of course uh, I do have to overclock to 3.3 or 4 gigahertz the CPU in order for it to beat uh, the core i7 at default speeds okay so keep that in mind I did run the SI Sandra um, benchmarks here just to see what it had to say about the ranking and it also concurred that it does beat the uh, Intel Core 2 uh, quads the quads here as you can see and also the AMD Phenom 2 965 at the default 3.4 gigahertz so it does beat those as well okay so it does verify it now how much is it priced well roughly going for about two hundred dollars US right now so here's some pricing you might find it a bit cheaper ten dollars cheaper here and there um, if you do some more tests like I did here just to see how long does it take to uh, re-encode a video for example from AVI to MP4 so here's a 500 meg file that I'm re-encoding it says that it's going to take about approximately 30 seconds to do that whole file and convert it. It actually took 23 seconds to um, convert it from uh, one file type to the other, okay, to re-encode that. Um, if I increase and overclock this to 4 gigahertz, it takes like 16 seconds. It takes even less, okay? 
So uh, pretty good results there as you can see. So if you're uh, doing any video editing and stuff like that, this is great for that as well. Game benchmarks. For those of you that like Modern uh, Warfare 2, here are the results. Okay. Terrific results. No bottlenecking, of course, as you can see running the uh, crossfire. Here's Dirt 2. Okay. With Direct X11 support. I reviewed this previously with the HD 5850. And here are the results. Batman. Here's another game. Okay. Very popular now. And um, getting terrific results on this one as well. Okay. So just for your information. Now, when overclocking a CPU like this, obviously you want a good CPU cooler. That's how I got it to um, 4 gigahertz hassle free. And of course, I upped the voltage to 1.32, as you can see here from the 1.2 volts. The multiplier was increased to 21 times, and the bus speed is at 190.5 megahertz. Okay, that's how we get that to 4 gigahertz. And uh, you can see here that at full load, overclocked, it's close to 70 degrees Celsius. It might not touch 70 in some cases, but it's close. Okay, still within limits. So there you go. Terrific processor, great for overclocking, matches and beats a lot of quad core CPUs out there. Definitely good for the price point, and I recommend it. So I'd like to thank Intel for providing it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.